Greetings again everybody, welcome back to Dark Souls. Believe it or not, but this is actually the spot where we fought Sif. Now to maybe honor his memory, we should use the weapon we got from his boss fight, the Greatsword of Artorius. Now I probably should have made the shield, the Great Shield of Artorius, which is pretty much the best shield of the game, but this weapon isn't that bad. If you have, well, all four base stats really high. Now, I don't really have them that high, so we will see how well this sword does. So this should look familiar to you. Because we've already been here. Only it's been in the future and it's been all dark. It's slightly different now, but you can definitely see that we are in Dark Root Garden now. Only the game calls it the Royal Woods for some reason. The enemies in this area are pretty much less devolved versions of the enemies we've already seen when we went through the Darkroot Woods and Darkroot Garden. I mean, those shrubs here, at least they were pants. And they can't do the long range attack, so that's a plus. But those are not the only uh, enemies that will remind us of other enemies we've already fought, because right over there we can actually see a Stone Guardian. Now he's not using a shield and a big ass sword, instead he uses a, a big axe, or rather a, a a rock slab attached to a pole. It's less of a, a chopping weapon as much as it is a, a squishing weapon. They can use their quote unquote axe in quite a few different ways uh, as well as you can see here. This attack usually gets every unsuspecting first time player who thinks they can just go in for a hit or two. If you get behind him when he does that, it's not much of a problem, but you should still watch out because it can actually hit you a little bit when you're behind him. But after he does it, you're good to go. Uh, those guys also have a wide variety of different kinds of swings, much more than you would think, but don't get too impressed by that because it's still all pretty slow swings you can fairly easily dodge. Of course, the usual applies, never let your guard down. And don't try to heavy attack those guys, uh, their staggering threshold is fairly high it seems. But yeah, eventually even they will go down. And they can actually drop their axes as well as Twinkling Titanite. Not the best spot to farm Twinkling Titanite though, at least in my opinion. But if you want the axe, well, prepare to cook quite a few of those. Those guys there can also drop their pitchfork by the way. It's a spear type weapon. And it has a really, let's say, let's say entertaining heavy attack. But we'll probably see them do it at some point. So now we have to fight another one of those guys. Fighting them usually takes a little bit, a little bit too long for my taste is anyway. But yeah, we are using the Silver Knight armor here. I already talked about Silver Knights a bit, so there really isn't much of a need to recap much. Except I, I will do it, just a little bit though. They were Gwyn's Royal Guard, so to speak. And later some of the Silver Knights went with him to fight the Chaos Demons and they got scorched and turned into Black Knights. Now that's pretty much the extent of their history, condensed into a few sentences. And uh, I already equipped the, the Ring of Favor and Protection, also called the Fab Ring by a few very classy individuals. What it does is, it increases our equip load, our HP and our stamina, but if we ever remove it, it will break. So let's not remove it. It's one of the best rings of the game anyway. Now, this spot here is a little bit different from the future version, which is the Dark Root Woods. Now, there would be a bridge up there over to that other tower where we talked to Elvina. No, that bridge isn't here, but now we pretty much know where we are, in case you, you lost your bearings or something. Now, healing in front of an enemy isn't exactly the smartest idea, but just bear with me for a second. 
I know I don't have a plan by the way. But the thing that I should mention is that we can find the armor of the Stone Guardian scattered all around this area here. And we actually picked up the first part already a couple seconds ago, up in that tower, the gauntlets. The other three parts, well, we will pick them up one after another uh, throughout this video. By the way, there is a really easy way to get through this area, actually. It gets even easier if you use the Ring of Fog to make it harder for enemies to detect you. If you just stick to the rightmost wall or cliff or whatever faces your right, uh, your right when you're leaving the bonfire area that is, uh, you will be able to get through the area without having to fight any of those. I'm not doing this though because I don't want to do it the easy way and we got the pitchfork of those shrubs. We won't use it now though because we're invaded and our invader friend is already coming. And hey! From joining the Gravelock Covenant, we got a miracle. So let's give it a try here, I'm pretty sure it will be very useful. Or we will get stabbed in the back, but hey, same difference. It's actually a kind of shitty miracle, I don't like it very much. But there, I showed it. Now I don't have to use it ever again. Hey, remember what worked really well against the Royal Guards in Analondo? Shooting them with a crossbow. Well, those are big enemies too and they are called Stone Guardians. They have the word guard in their name, so... And these are the Royal Woods... Well, yeah, I'm reaching there, obviously. But it seems to actually work, kind of. Still, I think it's not an ideal strategy, maybe? Alright then, let's learn from our mistake and use the crossbow a little more sparingly. For instance, only on approaching enemies. And hit a tree? Yes, the environment sometimes screws you over, especially in an area like this with a lot of small obstacles. Stuff like this can happen. But hey, got one hit in at least. If I had gotten in a second one in, I would have taken care of that guy before he even reached me. But now I think it's better if we go in close. So since we're using Artorius' greatsword in this video here, why not talk about Artorius a little bit? I mean, he's a fairly interesting character. I mean, this entire uh, DLC is named after him, Artorius of the Abyss. Uh, before it came out, he was only known as Artorius the Abyss Walker. And there are exactly all well, five pieces of equipment that relate to Artorius. One of them is the greatsword we're using right now. The other one would be the cursed greatsword, which we can't get anymore. And his great shield, which we can't get anymore either, because they're all forged from the same boss's soul. Uh, then there's also the wolf ring, which increases our poise. The Wolfring states that Artorius was unmatched in the use of a greatsword. Of course, he was also famous for using his great shield. And the final piece of equipment that relates to Artorius, which we can get, is, well, the Covenant of Artorius, which lets us traverse the Abyss and pretty much only fight the Four Kings. In the ring, the Covenant of Artorius states that uh, Artorius formed a covenant with the Beasts of the Abyss, which is what presumably lets him traverse the Abyss. Now we don't really know very much aside from that, but we might learn a little more since, well, as I already said, this content here is actually called Artorius of the Abyss. Like. All of Gwyn's Four Knights, Artorius also has an animal motive, the wolf. Now this is most likely inspired by uh, a work of fiction that features another wolf-themed greatsword-wielding character, Guts from the manga Berserk, which has been stated as inspiration for Demon Souls and Dark Souls to some extent. So Artorius, one of Gwyn's Four Royal Knights, uh, famous for using a really big sword and a really big shield. 
Also, sworn enemy of the Dark Wraiths, which presumably is why he went down uh, to traverse the abyss and learn the art of abyss walking. Now, the ring states that he formed a covenant with the with the uh, beast of the abyss, and this might mean that he is a fallen hero, but it's not really clear on that. There really isn't any clear indication of uh, what the beasts of the abyss are, whether it's it's Kath, but usually when the primordial serpents are mentioned, it actually refers to them as serpents and not as beasts. So really, there's no clue as to what those beasts are. Uh, but enough about that, at least for now. So we're in the royal woods of Ulasil. Uh, prior to the release of the Prepare to Die edition or the Autorius of the Abyss DLC, it was pretty well strongly hinted at that the Dark Road area is in fact a part of Ulasil, which is an ancient kingdom that doesn't exist anymore. Lucky for us, we can travel back in time by being dragged by some kind of demonic arm through some black hole or whatever. Well, it is not best to ponder on the details. The fact is that we have in fact traveled to a past before Darkroot Woods became the Darkroot Woods. Oh, and here is a blue titanite slab right in the spot where we found the enchanted amber. So I think maybe over time a blue titanite slab will turn into an amber. But anyway, yeah, Royal Woods of Ulasil. From what we know, Ulasil is a peaceful kingdom. Uh, the only inhabitant we pretty much know is, is Dusk of Ulasil. And then, of course, also Elizabeth, but she's a mushroom. Yeah, the spells Dusk sells are pretty much exclusively non-offensive. And they're all light-based, except for Repair. I'm not entirely sure what's up with that, but she does sell a Repair spell too. But all of the others, they're light-based, they can produce light, or make things invisible, or uh, manipulate light in a way, like for instance the chameleon spell. Kind of interesting. Oh, and Dusk, when we talked to her before, also mentioned that the magic of Ula Seal is more gentle than the other magic. Or more specifically, uh, she said that the magic of our age isn't as gentle and is more direct. Of course, since this is Dark Souls, we won't be able to actually witness this presumably peaceful golden age of Ulasil, and instead we will have to deal with a already fallen version of it, even though we did travel to the past, but as you can see here, things don't look that peaceful. But who knows, maybe we will actually find out a reason for that. For now though, all we can do is to make our way through this somewhat familiar area. This area, at least in our future version of it, if you remember, is divided in two halves and is kind of ring shaped. And we are about to wrap up the first half, all that's left now is the area where we fought the giant cats. And we can exit actually from right here, this nice little flower field. But instead, I'm gonna walk around it a little bit, because there is actually, well, how should I say this, there's something I want to show you over there. Note that one guy there, and how he's running away from us. Why yes, of course, this is an ambush. Compared to the cats though, dealing with those isn't too bad. I mean, they're kind of easy to deal with humanoid enemies that can't actually block, so you can just, you know, jump attack them like I do from a safe distance before they can actually uh, attack you. So that's dealt with, but oh, there's more of course. There is one last stone guardian over there, uh, one last stone guardian on this half of the map anyway. But we will have to take care of him, because he is guarding, actually, another part of the Stone Guardian armor set, which we want to get the entire set off, even though we probably won't use it much or at all. I don't really like the look of it, to be honest, but I will at least want to show you how to get it. Uh, the Stone Guardians, by the way, are 
according to the description of the armor, animated golems, and since they're called guardians, I assume that they are there to, well, guard the otherwise peaceful country of Ulusil. But there, we killed them, and we're now free to pick up what's on the corpse back there. And it is just what we want, of course, the guardian leggings. The other two parts of this armor set are on the other half of uh, this area. You might remember this bridge there. There was a ladder here normally, but oh. Nice, dragon. Good, I can't damage it. Um, anyway, yeah. to the left there would be Darkroot Basin. But there isn't any water there at this point, or at least it's it's not full of water yet. And we can't climb down there, but that's not really important. So yeah, now we are in the other half. So let us explore it. The second part, by the way, we should be able to get through it a little more quickly. Because, well, even though it's kind of equally big in size, it's easier to get around in because there are less enemies. Though, I will say that it kind of looks a little more confusing than the other half, as you will see. Also, pay attention to the ambient sound here. Kind of sounds like a thunderstorm is a brewing, even though the sky's clear. And yeah, we have to jump over there. That enemy we saw there, well, we already seen him before, of course, but that guy was using scissors. And I don't really care about fighting that guy, to be honest. Those guys, though, we can deal with easily. I don't mind them. And that's kind of a problem I have with the enemies in this area, or rather the stone guardians. Because while they're challenging enemies at first, they become kind of tedious after you've beaten a couple. Because they take way too long to defeat. They take so many hits it's just... well, it's kind of boring. Of course, my weapon is also to blame. I'm using a Taurus's Greatsword as we already know. And it is only really good if you have really high base stats, like strength, dexterity, faith, and intelligence. Because it scales with all of those stats, and hey, guardian armor by the way. But yeah, our weapon is kind of underwhelming at the moment. Because it's not at its full potential because of our stats. And oh, Goff's great arrow, this should be interesting, maybe we can use that with... With the Dragon Slayer Great Bow, who knows? And yes, at this point they just decide to run away from those Stone Guardians because I don't really need to fight them. I mean, this area is, is practically devoid of enemies anyway. There are only very few, at least in, in this part of this half of this area. And the last piece of the Guardian Armor, right up here. So now all that's left to do is to actually try to get to the end here, because there's nothing essential anymore for us to pick up here. But hey, there, look, a kind of hidden looking path. Elizabeth Mushroom is a nice item, actually. Uh, when we use it, our health will regenerate for a set amount of time, and that quite quickly too, so it's nice to have, but kind of too cool to use, so uh, I never use it myself. Probably should though, because it's really good. For now, I think we should get back down there to that ominous hole in the ground with nothing but blackness at its bottom. In general, this half of the area seems much darker than the other one, and note the tower there in the background. Uh, this is our destination, and we're almost there. In fact, where we need to go is the part where uh, Alvina would be in the future version of this area. So we can proceed. Well, from there on, anyway. And there I use the heavy attack of the 
of the greatsword. It's not very useful usually because it's a really long windup, but if you can hit with it, that's kinda nice. And those enemies here, well, they're not enemies. Guess what? They don't even attack us. Unless, of course... Yeah. Unless we loot that corpse for all its riches. Which is a gold coin, which is practically useless. It can only be sold for souls to Framd. And we angered Framd a little bit, so we can't use that coin. Which... Yeah, it's, it's a little bit sad, to be honest. Uh, more stone guardians... Well, guess what? I don't feel like dealing with those, so I will just run for it. I don't want to fight any of those. I don't care if it screws us over in the end. And hey, look there, a crystal lizard. Yeah, let's chase that one, while also being chased by a bunch of stone guardians and shrubs. Because I just need that Titanite, because I'm a greedy bastard. Hey, okay, that... that went well, actually. You know what? Let's also run behind that tower to grab that item I just glimpsed. This should go really well. Oh yeah, look at this. I can't possibly die here. After all, I am invincible. Honestly, I didn't expect us to make it. I expected us to die right before the finish line here. Because this was a pretty stupid move, to be honest. But we're done with it now. And we can see in front of us a fog gate. But to the right... Oh, look there, there is a, a fire of sorts. It's, it's not a bonfire, but there's someone there, so let's talk to them. Hmm. Ah, let me guess. Snatched by a shadowy limb and dragged off to the past? Yes, of course. Exactly what happened to me. We are both strangers in this strange land. But at least now there are two of us. Did you happen across Knight Artorias? The legendary abyss walker from the old tales. Well, if you haven't, it's just as well. He's a colorless sort, if you ask me. <laughs> so, what did that giant mushroom make you do? Not that I care. It's none of my business. <laughs> hmm? I've little to talk about, really. Oh, you know me. What do I know? <laughs> this guy is called Marvelous Chester, and his design is based on the fat ministers from Demon Souls, only he, he isn't fat, evidently. So long. There isn't much more to say about him, except that he apparently is also from the future. Though we have no idea whether or not he is from our age, or from another one. But hey, yes, we unlocked a shortcut. We're now back here in the woods, and if we if we look over there, we see our destination, the tower, and if we go over there, we will get back to the bonfire. But we don't want to go back to the bonfire. So let's go here instead. Now just so you know, to the left there, we can actually go down. But we will save that part for a little later. Instead... Well, let's go right through this fog it had there.
And of course, our boss for this area is none other than Knight Artorius, although he doesn't look very knightly. I mean, he looks rather dark to be honest. And we do know that he used to be unmatched in the use of a great sword, and that appears to be true here, he's using it with one hand even. But where's his shield? It's not there. Instead his arm, his, his left arm appears to be kinda limp, maybe broken. But he still is a fierce opponent, as you can see here. And I thought it would be a good idea to face him using the greatsword of Artorius, his own weapon. But as you can see, I barely do any damage against him. Out of all of the fights that came with the additional content of the Prepare to Die edition and the Taurus of the Abyss, this is probably my favorite boss fight, though also the one that gives me the most trouble. It's, it's very difficult to tell what kind of attack he is using at some points, and dodging them can be difficult as well. He is a very, a very aggressive opponent, so the fight feels very intense. The music makes it feel really dramatic too, and it is, it's really rewarding to actually beat him. Oh, and we need this, this by the way, this charge him move, which I just interrupted there. He will power up and become, well, stronger. But hey, I prevented that. Still, hate to spoil it for you, but I'm not going to make this on my first try. So let's see how I did on my second one. Switching up strategies a little bit, mainly using the crossbow instead of the sword. Maybe beating him with his own weapon was such a good idea after all. And the crossbow, it, it actually seemed to work. Allows us to attack from a little more of a distance if necessary. Still pretty hard to hit him though. But it does about the same amount of damage as the sword. Still, if we would two-hand the sword, we'd do more damage. But hey, um... Hey, spoilers again, not gonna make it like this. So let's have a look at the third try. Ah, the power within, a pyromancy that drains our health but makes us super powerful. Also using heavy armor for increased poise so we can just wail on him. I wouldn't be able to show you how effective uh, the power within can be otherwise. Normally I would prefer not using heavy armor, but hey, why not? Just goes to show that even if you have trouble with a fight, there is a way to cheese just about every boss fight in the game. You can see here, while he does hit me and while he does some uh, decent damage to me, I can just take it and even heal with little problems. And they do a lot of damage thanks to power within. Um, I don't even have to worry about dodging. Of course, if I actually decided to use another weapon, like say, for instance, the Black Knight Sword, that would make this fight even easier using power within. But hey, I want to beat him with his own weapon. And from the looks of it, he's just about done. Two or three more hits should do it. There, victory. Yeah, whatever, not like you completely killed me twice. And we got his soul. So you know the drill, let's have a quick look at what we can actually make from that soul. The Abyss Greatsword belonged to Lord Quinn's Knight Artorius, who fell to the Abyss, swallowed by the dark with its master. This sword is tainted by the Abyss, and now its strength reflects its wieldless humanity. And it lets us use all of the favorite Artorius moves that kill us. It also gets stronger the more humanity we have, as implied by the flavor text. Of course, like all weapons that scale with humanity, this one caps at 10. Fully upgraded and with 10 humanity, it can be fairly strong. In fact, it's downright devastating. And this area, by the way, is a small glimpse of the future.
But hey, this is the Abyss Greatsword. Of course, you didn't think I would just show you a fight against Artorius and cheese him completely and call it a day? Nope, here, have a full proper fight against Knight Artorius, who's pretty much my favorite boss from Artorius of the Abyss. I mentioned this a little bit earlier, when I talked about Ula Seal. But the thing is that we never really see the glorious golden age of, of anything. I mean, look at Artorius here. I mean, we've heard of him. We heard that he is one of Gwyn's four knights, a hero, but this guy, he, he doesn't look like a hero. In fact, he doesn't really look like he, he's under control of himself. Almost like he's possessed by something or somebody. And he is fairly badly injured. So yeah, the point is that we never really see anything at its peak. We just walk through the ruins and witness the devastation. Of course, this also raises the question, how did things fall to ruin? In this case, you're probably wondering what exactly or who exactly did this to Artorius? Who injured him so badly? Well, you're not alone there, and we might find out at some point there has to be a reason. I mean, there always is in Dark Souls. While a lot of things are left open to interpretation, things like this are usually explained in some way or another. Or at least there will be a bone thrown our way, so we can speculate a little bit. Or maybe it will be outright explained to us. And I just don't want to spoil anything. Who knows? But yes, um, now we can safely say, I think, that after Artorius went into the Abyss, it didn't really go well for him. He might have learned the art of Abyss walking, but in the end, the Abyss consumed him. And this is what we take from the description of the Abyss Greatsword. Strategy-wise, it's kind of hard to talk about this fight. One thing I can say for sure is that whenever he does his spinning jump attack, he can do this up to three times. At least I haven't seen him done it much more. But if he doesn't do it a second time after doing it once, you can usually go in for an attack or maybe even two. Other than that, you will have to look for openings. For instance, this here looked like a good spot to to attack him, but also like good spot to heal, of course. So there, I healed. Almost out of Estus, though. You see, while this fight, well, might go better than my other attempts where I didn't cheese it. Well, it's still kind of sloppy, and they had to heal a lot. In fact, I had to resort to using humanity. Because I can't stress this enough, but this is a really tough fight, and it's also the reason I like it. And I don't exactly know what this this uh, abyss juice Artorius is throwing at us actually does to us. I don't think it corrodes armor or anything. I think it just does damage to us. Oh, by the way, another really good opportunity to get in a couple of hits would be when he charges up. Because, well, while he actually has increased defense while he's charging, you can still do quite a lot of damage if you just wail on him, which you have to do to interrupt him. Well, look at this. Artorius is almost dead. Let's end this. Almost took us with him, but in the end, we survived. Oh, so after this, let's have a quick look at this arena. Because, well, it looks kind of nice, I think. And then, let's go on. To the right there, by the way, there is the PvP lobby, so to speak. But we're not gonna go there now. Instead, what we're gonna do is we're going to sit down at this here bonfire. And then... Well, we'll call it a day. Once more, I say goodbye. But of course, I do hope to see you again next time.